I built three personal domes and then I built several others with others for their own personal use and a couple for the uh, amateur telescope makers. But uh, the, I'm going to show you what I think is a reasonable way to build a dome. Uh, let me show you three different domes I built. It was a 14 footer, finished in 1987. It works very well. I use a split. The split, after about 10 years, started to leak out the middle. It was real hard to repair. I replaced that up and over, and I think that's clearly the way to go now. I wouldn't do a split in the future. Uh, this is an up and over. This is an 18 foot dome. This one's still in operation. The other one was just taken apart a year, or a year and a half ago and moved. This one I call house by 32 inch in uh, New Hampshire. It's an 18 foot diameter dome. And here it is my latest, which is just completed. Uh, that's a 20 foot dome. For the construction techniques I'm going to tell you, anywhere from a 10 to 14 foot is easy to build. 18 foot stacks getting bigger, and 20 foot is probably the limits of the way you can be able to build this way. And I say that because it's uh, a dome increases the complexity soil like a parabola. It's, uh, it's a cube in function. It, and the 20 foot dome is much larger than the 18, and the 18 is infinitely larger than the 14. It doesn't sound like a lot because of my cube function. And because of that, all the struts have to be longer, all the overlaps have to be higher and longer to make. But the advantage is this this 20 foot dome, anyone want to guess what it costs me? The bill? Take a while, guess. How much? Seven hundred. Oh, that's a little on the low side. Yeah. It cost me a thousand three hundred to build that dome. Okay, an ash dome, the exact same size, will run you sixty-four thousand dollars. Here's the reason why you build your own home dome. It doesn't come as a kit. You're going to have to do all the cutting yourself. But I'm going to show you how. It's not that difficult. Uh, when I started building a dome, I actually viewed a lot of uh, different people who built them before, and the main problem is they leak, they have to keep hopping, uh, but if you use the right materials, you eliminate that. Number one, use fiberglass. All my domes make fiberglass. If you seal them properly with the right hopping, it never leaks. Basically, you're building a boat bottom and just tipping it upside down. If you, do, if you think of it that way, it's not a problem. I'm going to show you how to make it so it doesn't leak. I won't hold it so close now. Uh, the first dome I'm going to run through quickly, like the movie, we'll give you just a preview, and then we'll talk about the second and third dome in a little more detail. First thing is first is uh, decide how you're going to mount the scope, because the scope needs to be mounted separately from the building. And that, that I can't stress that enough. You can't be walking around a building if the the scope is sitting in that building. It's going to shake, it's going to vibrate. That should be self-obvious to everyone here. If it isn't, that's, that, that's tip number one. So the first one, I, when we built my first house, told the contractor we have put, hello, laser pointer up. I'm um, here. Thanks. I, told, I lined it up exactly uh, to the north. Somehow the stake got moved, and he to the north, and he, he somehow uh, remembered that it was 16 degrees off from what I had, so he put it uh, here, and it turns out it needed to be here. So the first thing I had to do was say, knock that down, it's not over. So you got to make sure it was true north. Of you. This was an English cross axle on the first one. You got to get electricity up there, so you got to plan for that. You need a steady platform, but the whatever's holding the telescope has to be completely independent of the floor. So you have to put something around, something spongy that'll hold back the cement. It won't press on, so if you have a crowd of, uh, you know, fourth graders, which I have, a whole classroom come through on this observatory and jump up and down excitedly, you're not going to shake the dome. All right? And you have to figure out what kind of building you're going to have. And you got to figure out a way to make the parts. Uh, remember, this is the future. Okay, you got to make curves. Turns out routers work much better than saber saws. Saber saws wobble. You're going to have to overlap these, so they have to be an exact match. And you have to make the curve, uh, the outside curve, 
different from the inside curve for organic wall mash rate. So you have to have some kind of mechanism like here, a couple of screws on two separate pieces of wood works fine. Uh, so you slip that in and out and you can mark it where the right radius of curvature is. And then you end up with a base frame. Okay? This one I have some hair actually. Uh, and that's my daughter who's now 25. <laughs> it's just in the eyes of my son who's down there, so that's how old this stone is. Um, my daughter. This one is small enough that I can build in my garage. Okay? Now, how do you attach the struts? Again, I'm going to detail more than the further domes, but uh, the first time I think it worked very well, it's just shelf supports. That's how you attach the struts to the base ring. How do you attach the upper parts? They have, to, they have to come at a certain angle as they go along. Well, these uh, uh, flat panel, flat piece of metal that you can get in uh, any home depot, you can bend it in any shape and screw them in. Now you don't have to worry about how this gets attached that because this takes care of the entire load. If you're worried that it's not strong enough, all that's here is the two central arches and one side support, and you can hang from it and it's perfectly sturdy. Okay, think of how strong it is when all the arch supports are on it. Okay, arches are incredibly strong. Ask the Romans, they invented arches 2000, 2000 years ago and they're still standing. Okay, so if you, a dome is basically a, a series of arches. So it's very, very strong. It survived hurricanes, it survived hailstorms, thunder. Okay. Um, anyways, once you get it completed, the next step is how to get it on, on the dome. You cover it with this material, which you can get from, I got it from Cowell Corporation, uh, which is in New Hampshire. Uh, just north of, uh, uh, it's halfway between Manchester and Concord, uh, right near where you pay tolls. But uh, you can look that up, Calwell. And what they make is structural fiberglass, not the thin stuff you buy in local home depots that are corrugated because it's so thin and flex. This is 0.050 thick. It's impregnated with material to prevent any ultraviolet damage, so basically it's indestructible. Um, and it comes in these four by eight sheets. The key is that they, they use this for uh, greenhouses. If you go in to buy a four by eight sheet or an infinitely large roll, they'll charge you some ridiculous amount, like 18, 20 bucks a foot, by the time you can hire sometimes. But if you go in and ask for these scraps, like seven foot lengths, it's free. They throw it away because they can't sell it. So basically, that's why all the domes are. At least when I first got them, were seven foot lengths, and then I just overlap them. Okay, so all the, all the building material is set to be free. Now I get down to 1,000 bucks. Um, the subsequent domes, uh, I beg, we were building a dome, uh, an observatory for the ATMs, and I, I basically sat there and begged to be uh, president of the corporation. So, you know, it's for the kids, we're going to build a big dome. So, they gave me this gigantic roll that was never cut. It was an infinite roll. It turned out it was not for two domes. So I gave me the ATM top and I kept that. Uh, now it's my last dome. Anyways, get a crowd. And they, the nice thing about ATMers, they work real cheap. Spaghetti, pizza, and beer, and you can get them to the game. Anyway, um, get the dome out. It's not that heavy. Buy the glasses light. Now, look at the uh, connections. All these screws, okay? Yeah, you need that in order to mat it down, obviously. But you need it to be waterproof. It turns out, uh, fiberglass panels, if you put latex caulking, but I found even better, fin seal caulking, they last forever. It almost gives it a permanent bond. Even if you take the screws out, you can't rip this apart, okay? So fin seal bonding, on top of that, in effect, it becomes a boat on just make sure you seal all along the edges because that's where you're going to get leaks. If you make a good seal along here, uh, a bead, before you put these in, uh, you're not going to have any leaks. Make sure you obviously hold that when you need to. Finally, the screws. That would be a source of corrosion if you don't use uh, uh, car, uh, you know, non corrosive uh, type screws. You use stainless steel screws, that's what I use. But even more importantly, that's a source of leaks. 
So here's a simple solution. Um, all, unfortunately, all faucets now are, are, are washerless. Go to a, uh, a plumbing store and ask for an old style washer. They come in boxes of 100. Okay, little washers, very cheap. Uh, instead of an ordinary washer, put a rubber washer, put the screw on top of that, and, and drill that in. You now have the exact equivalent of a, uh, of a washer on a faucet. You don't have any leaks. At this stone, built in 87, it never leaked one drop until it was taken apart last year. Uh, what's the next for the metal workers? Yeah. From ready made lip washers. Okay, that an idea. But I'm not sure sure steel is good enough. Do they have a stainless is fine. Do they have a rubber washer? Okay. He's saying that roofing screws come with a rubber washer. That's fine. That you can get those. I didn't know about that, but I just bought a bunch of rubber washers, stuck them on ordinary screws. I never had them. Okay. Anyways, we get them on top, put them on top of the uh, dome, and then you have a pier inside, and you need to have it rotate. So you need big wheels. I find big wheels work a lot better than small wheels. And my first scope, uh, 16 inch big scope, was a uh, English cross axle. That worked, worked very well for a number of years. Okay, next scope, a little more detail. Um, Yes, like you dig your own trench. <laughs> That's how you get this for under a thousand bucks. You have to do a little bit of sweat labor. Get some cement cord. Again, the pier in this case is a different type of mount, but it's, if you see there's a wood handle going all the way around, the pier is different from that. The pier goes down six feet, the, uh, and this has its own foundation around the outside. Again, standard construction. This one is round instead of like that and like the other one. <clears throat> this one's still in operation. It has a 32 by more than 32 inch observer in the hamster. And here are the panels. Notice how evenly cut they are. If you use that pivot method and a good router, uh, uh, and just make sure that the bits stay nice and sharp, you can make a nice smooth cut. What I found is taking four by eight plywood panel and actually uh, screw them into heavy wood like that so it doesn't shift. Because if it shifts, you're going to end up throwing that piece away. It's got to stay rigid when you're cutting it. But as long as you make a nice, rigid, straight cut, you can make all these curves perfect. Yeah. Uh, the side panels were half inch and double because they have to overlap. Just the ease of cutting it is half an inch, but the central arches were four layers. Okay? Three layers overlap for strength, and then a fourth layer that is smaller so that the fiberglass can lay on top of it. And then you can run your feet on top of that. Here's Gary Walker and other members of the ATM, so I'll be set up again. They work in the drizzle for two days, and they kind of set up an observatory, it seems to rain. We worked in the for two days, and in uh, 94, this was uh, finished. Um, and our class was a couple boxes of pizza, and uh, so yeah, yeah, that was at our 12th record. Um, again, the side arches, notice the same structural uh, method of attachment. Very inexpensive, very easy to build. There's really no reason why anyone would kind of have done. Same thing, overlap, finish, sealed, just needs to be painted. Here's the mirror that went up into uh, that front here, it's not thing, this particular telescope uh, back in 94. That's still in operation and it works beautifully. Okay, for the latest stone, um, I'm getting real lazy. The, the other dome you saw, you have to walk 100 feet outside, and then went to time. You know, I got to put everything together, get the computer inside, and uh, all that. At the side, we were going to be moving, and my wife found a piece of land. She asked me to uh, go check it out if she wanted to move closer to the water. So I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she uh, said, it's getting kind of late. I should have go out there. And I'm going to go at midnight. 
So I got there at midnight, laid down on the ground here, counted, uh, it was nine or ten stars in the square of Pegasus, woke her up at two answers and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted me to see the views all around. I never saw that until after she bought it, actually, but uh, the view on the top was great. It was great. <laughs> Anyways, she let me, not too many, before I get too much grief, not too many wives will let you build a giant pier before you actually build a house. <laughs> so that was up first. And then the foundation was built around it, which worked out pretty well, actually. But again, the foundation, the main point is the foundation is separate from the house foundation. Um, there's structural steel supports for the house. They do not touch the, the pier. The, the builders kept asking, we kept this kind of thing, why can't we attach it? And touch anything to it. So basically, you just fill the cracks in with RTV so that it doesn't have a chimney effect, but it's completely separate. And that, I kind of stressed that out. Every once in a while, they put a piece of plywood too close, and I have to come and say, take that one out and cut it. <laughs> and they, they thought I was totally insane. The neighbors kept wondering um, where the bridge was. <laughs> okay, so then we get a house in the south. I, I, requisitioned the southern end of the house and my wife had the northern end which had a better view of the ocean. So we were both happy. Uh, again, cutting out the same way. And you end up with nice smooth curves. Use waterproof glue just in case you do get a leak. Okay, use a really good quality glue. Put lots of screws and you will have a perfectly made arch that is essentially indestructible, okay? And uh, again, notice just with a couple of side supports, you can lean against it now, it's perfectly rigid. It's unbelievable, unbelievable how strong arches are, I can't stress that enough, that's one of the advantages. As opposed to, I, I know roll-out groups are fine, but roll-out groups are always going to have some wiggle, you have to make them rigid if they're going to roll, you have to have the, the, the uh, they're not, inherently strong. Arches are inherently strong right from the start. Here's my son now, a little older than that first picture. Members of the ATMs here helping out. Again, they don't learn. They just keep coming more easier than they work all night. That's right. And there is the basic uh, skeleton. And it's very, very rigid, very, very strong. Now I just got to add the side panels. This time, I didn't have to do any overlaps. For some reason, they just gave me a whole new thing. I didn't hear me back, so they just gave me a giant roll for free, which is incredible. Um, even if you had to pay for it, it would be a lot cheaper than buying a national. Again, the same uh, construction. You can see the RTV seal, right? And you can see the screws, and they're on top of rubber washers. I've yet to have a leak. And you got to see the, uh, the work into the night to get it finished. Uh, and there we go. And here's my wife trying to figure out how the heck we got the dome done before the bill was out of the roof done. <laughs> there are priorities in life. Uh, but eventually the rest of the house got done as well. Uh, the inside before the uh, finished work. Again, the same type of shelf supports. They're incredibly strong, and once it's all together, you can take it apart if you want to. Very inexpensive. I mean, those pots are like 90 cents each. They're cheap. Cross supports and arches. How do you move the dome? Again, wheels, lots of them, and uh, these are one, six, uh, which are slightly under power. I had to add several in this case, but they want six plus power motors. Uh, I have four of them, and they, they work in tandem to rotate the dome around. The other reason I want the small motors with uh, more motors is in the past I used one motor, and then when this is still my plant the side is for safety. Now I have four motors equally scattered, because I'm on a high point in Gloucester, and some 